वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स टुडे हैव अ टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज ए जनरल अकाउंट ऑन प्रेमिटिव एंजियोस्पर्म्स द एंजियोस्पर्म्स और फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स वन ऑफ द मेजर क्लास ऑफ एक्सटेंड सीड प्लांट्स आर द लार्जेस्ट ग्रुप ऑफ एम्ब्रोफाइट्स विद एट लीस्ट टू लैख सिक्सटी थाउजेंड लिविंग स्पीशीज क्लासिफाइड इन फोर फिफ्टी थ्री फैमिलीज their number is much greater than all other groups of plants combined together they are the dominant plants on earth at this time and have occurred as dominant for the last 100 million years they show great diversity in their habitat than any other group of land plants during the past 130 million years they have conquered practically every conceivable habitat on earth that's from hot deserts and wind swept alpine summits to fertile grasslands fresh water marshes dense forests and lush mountain meadows although a number of flowering plants live in aquatic habitats and have adapted to the saline conditions of dry lake beds and salt marshes relatively few species live submerged in the oceans there has for a number of years been much speculation as to the origin and characteristics of primitive endosperms while tracing their ancestors various groups of plants have been considered as the probable ancestors by different workers some believe various orders of gymnosperms like bennetted tails corded tails cycadophyllicales cycadales and the tails others pteridophytes like xylophyte tails lycopodales and equus tails and even some others have regarded algae as their probable ancestor fossil records have been of little help in determining the ancestry of endosperms the prehistory of angiosperms remains unknown and morphologically they are so sharply delimited from the gymnosperms that there are little chance of filling the gap in our knowledge cronquest rightly points out the missing link is indeed still missing and charles darwin called the origin of angiosperms an abominable mystery in absence of definite evidence which could help in tracing their probable ancestors although today a huge literature exists on the same topic but still it is an enigma now major characters of endosperms extensive research has been carried out by various phylogenetists to find out the characters of primitive endosperms and such investigations have revolved around following points like how the earliest angiosperms evolved monophyletically or polyphyletically second what were the environmental conditions which favored their evolution third what was the habit of primitive angiosperms that's whether arborescent or herbaceous next what was the stem structure the type of conductive tissues and was the cambium present or absent what was the shape and size of their leaves what was the structure of the flower whether relatively simple or complex were the petals present or absent and when present whether separate or united were flowers mono or diclinous in organization what were the type of pollinators what was the type of fruit they possessed what was the number of cotyledons in their embryos how much of endosperm was present in their seeds and what was the type of their seedling anatomy however it needs to be pointed out that the concept of primitive and advanced characters is relative and meaningless unless definitely related to a particular taxon lineage or phylogeny within a taxon the characteristics of the common ancestry are primitive and others are more or less specialized 
in proportion to their departure from the ancestral condition. It's common knowledge that organs do not evolve at the same rate. Delphinium, for example, is primitive in having free follicles, specialized in its zygomorphic parent with a nectar spur. The non-rhythmic correlation of advanced and primitive characters is particularly prevalent in lower endosperm families, for example in Ranales. But in more specialized families such as Asteraceae, Lamiaceae, the ancestral features of the endosperm seem to have been lost. The rates at which organs evolve are obviously related to the selection pressures affecting them and to their genetic ability to vary. The different rates at which organs have evolved in the same species makes it particularly difficult to assess relationships or even to infer whether one taxonomy group is more advanced than another. For this purpose, it is necessary to assess the average advancement of as many characters as possible. A further complication is that different lineages have advanced at different rates. This means that an advanced taxon may be either more ancient or recent than another advanced group. Indeed, it may have been less advanced yet younger than another. Without fossil evidence, such cases may remain unresolved. Sporn in 1948, however, has clarified a point which has confused many botanists, including Hutchinson, in their assessment of advanced and primitive characters. According to Sporn, a primitive character is one which possessed by their ancestors and is also possessed by the present day taxa. Primitive and advanced groups may be ancient and recent accordingly. Now, traditional versus recent views regarding primitive endosperms. Magnolids traditionally have been considered to retain the greatest number of plesiomorphic features within the endosperms. This viewpoint has received some support from morphology based cladistic analysis. The magnolids, therefore, may represent a basal paraphyletic complex within the endosperms as supported by the possibly retained plesiomorphic features of laminal anthers. The non-columulate pollen of magnolias may also be a retained plesiomorphy. But most analysts of the past several years concur in placing the monotypic emborilla as a sister to all other extant endosperms. Although some analysis suggest Emborilla plus water lilies may occupy this pivotal position because Emborilla has spirally arranged floral organs. Now, primitive endosperms and nature of pollinators. Within the endosperms, there is a general trend from primitive beetle and fly pollinated flowers towards more advanced pollination by butterflies moths and bees. Flowers pollinated by bees show the greatest degree of nectar, scent, coloration, diversity and pollen production as well as diverse specialization of flower structure. Primitive flowers tend to be trumpet or saucer shaped. For example, ranunculus, hibiscus, Magnolia, Malva, Lavatra, Cucurbita, and Papaver. While more advanced flowers may be tubular, for example, Symphytum, Digitalis, Lamium. Arika, Datura, and Nicotiana, or zygomorphic, for example, Orthis, Enterinum, Pisum, Lobelia, 
Viola, Gentiana, Wisteria, Mammulus, Lonicera, and Begonia. There are thus two directions of adaptations from polypetaly that's many petals to oligopetaly that's fever petals and from separate petals to sympetaly that's fused petals. However, simple flowers as in Comilinidae like grasses, sedges and rushes and U4 beals may not be primitive but derived from more complex forms in the lilies. Thus their simplicity is secondary and a form of structural degeneration rather than a primitive feature. Now different views on the concept of primitive endosperms. Some phylogenists believe that the first flowering plants were upland plants that diversified in tropical or arid regions about 250 million years ago that's in Permian period of Paleozoic era. Endosperm fossils of that age are unknown, probably because they evolved in dry uplands that were not conducive to fossilization. Thus, the lack of fossil may be due to their limited distribution and insignificant role that they might have played in the vegetation of the world. A few phylogenetists are of the view that the primitive flowering plants were tropical mesophytic trees with pinnate leaves and the fruits were in the form of clusters of large arillate follicles. According to Stebbins in 1974, primitive endosperms were small woody plants with small leaves and moderate sized flowers. According to Takhtajan, moderate sized solitary, axillary or terminal flower having parent of modified bracts, leaf-like stems, monosulcate pollen and conduplicate carpal are the characteristic feature of a primitive endospermic flower. Another important trend is shift away from single flowers for example papaver, ranunculus, nulumbo, towards multiple flowers in racemes, spikes, whorls and heads, for example, lamium, scrofularia, gentiana, borago, laburnum, plantago, achelia, and salix. This trend reached its height of perfection in the dipsicales, the APAC and above all in the esterales. In esterase, the compound flowers represent a spike or whorl of flowers that has failed to expand vertically and all the flowers are packed side by side instead on a flat head that's capitula. We can still trace the spiral patterns in Helianthus heads, for example, where the word like pattern of the raceme would have unfolded if it had elongated vertically. Now, Hutchinson believed that the primitive endospermic flowers were medium sized and grouped together in lateral clusters, much like those of James Wintry of the family Winteraceae. The members of this family also lack vessels in xylem. Cronkest also regarded Dream's Wintry as primitive endosperm because of the presence of early endosperm features like small woody plants with simple entire pinnately veined leaves with large terminal and axillary solitary flowers on an elongated receptacle bearing a parent of modified bracts leaf-like stamens bearing monosulcate pollen and unsealed conduplicate carpels. England and Prangel regarded amentifery including Juglandaceae, Butalaceae, 
phagaceae, etc., as the most primitive endospermes because they have unisexual flowers arranged in catkins and their flowers do not possess petals. The inflorescences resemble the cones of gymnosperms. However, this view has been rejected because the plants of this group produce dry colpate pollen grains and possess an advanced type of wood anatomy. Taylor and Hickey developed the paleo herb hypothesis for evolution of endosperms. According to this hypothesis, most primitive endosperms are rhizomatous perennial herbs with simple alternate net leaved, thin textured, and with anomocytic stomata and flowers arranged in racines or sun inflorescences. Flowers have numerous to few parts. Those of the parent and androsium usually are in the whorls of tree. The filament is well differentiated from the anther and the connective usually inconspicuous. Pollen grains usually have a columnar exine. The paleo herbs include aristotales, papyrales, nymphiales, and ceratophyllales. They consider chloranthaceae as the most primitive family because of their small, simple flowers have an extensive fossil record dating back 125 million years. Some of the important and well-documented phylogenetic characteristics about the endosperms that had been put forward by Hutchinson in 1959 are as Woody stems are more primitive than herbaceous stems and herbs have been derived from trees. Trees and shrubs are more primitive than climbers and twiners in any one family or genus. Perennials are more primitive than biennials and annuals. Aquatic flowering plants are derived from terrestrial ancestors and epiphytes, saprophytes and parasites are more recent. The simple unbranched stem is an earlier type from which branching stems have been derived. The stem structure with collateral vascular bundles arranged in a ring is more primitive feature than that with scattered bundles in a few dicotyledons and most of the monocotyledons and the later are to be regarded as derived from the former. The paired arrangement of leaves on the stem is held to have preceded a spiral arrangement in which the leaves are solitary at the nodes. The trilacular node is the primitive type in the endosperms and that the unilacular node developed phylogenetically. Primitive organized water conductor system includes vessel-less wood, the presence of trichies with scaliform bordered pits. They flow in with long sieve elements and with groups of minute pores forming scattered sieve areas along the longitudinal walls and very oblique end walls are considered primitive than the one with horizontal end walls having a sharply defined single sieve area. The flowers of the earliest endosperms were radially symmetrical have had an elongated axis with an indefinite and variable number of large free parts arranged spirally on it. Separate parts are generally considered to be ancestral to fused parts. Separate petals precede united petals and separate carpels precede united carpels. Such flowers are very similar to the straw lay of cycadian gymnosperms. The primitive type of stamen has broad laminar structure undifferentiated into filament and connective. The pollen grains in primitive type of endosperms are with only one polar germinal furrow in the spore wall. Carpels in primitive type of endosperms were large, leaf-like, partially closed at the time of pollination and containing many ovules. The style in primitive endosperm is absent and the stigma decurrent along the suture of the carpal. The seeds in primitive endosperm are large with abundant endosperm and a very small undifferentiated embryo. 
the primitive fruits appear to be cone-like structures consisting of a large many seeded follicles. For example, an apocarpus gynecium of Magnoliaceae, presumed to be a primitive family, matures into a cluster of follicles. With this, we conclude today's topic that was about a general account on primitive angiosperms wherein we learned that angiosperms are the most recently evolved major group of plants and they have been in existence from the early Cretaceous that some 132 million years ago. Second, the most significant factor that modifies the floral structure of angiosperms was their co-evolution with insects as a major evolutionary trend with respect to pollinators have been from beetle to butterflies. And lastly, the traits like growth habit, leaf arrangement, stem structure, wood anatomy, nodal anatomy and above all the reproductive structures that had been put forward by Hutchinson and modified by others are to be taken into consideration while describing the phylogeny of endosperms. Thank you.